Hello everyone. Today I want to share with you a side project of mine I've been working on for the past six years. It's not Minecraft related, but it has been so useful to me that I feel like I need to share. I'm sure you've noticed recently that YouTube has begun to crack down on ad blockers. As a uBlock Origin user, normally this isn't a big deal since they update their filter lists frequently. But with YouTube updating their code almost daily now, there are times in which it doesn't work. Fortunately, I've built an extension with the ability to bypass all that entirely by replacing Google's default video player with my own altogether. Simply click the icon, and voila, I can now play the video. Now, while this is helpful these days, bypassing YouTube's anti-ad blocker wasn't the purpose I had in mind when I created FastStream. In actuality, I created the first version of FastStream to solve video buffering issues on websites I visited. The way it works is pretty simple. In the background, it will fetch parts of the video in parallel to bypass any per-request throttling enabled on most servers. This download acceleration technique results in up to six times faster downloads, allowing for the player to play without ever buffering in most scenarios. To use, simply click the icon on any website with a video, and it will replace it with FastStream's accelerated player. Barring websites with DRM, it works with any website that uses MP4s, HLS live streaming, or Dash streams. Now, that's not all. In the past six years I've been using FastStream, I've also been improving the player itself at every level. Here are a couple of features I find to be immensely useful. One of the first things I've added to FastStream is the keybind system. To adjust your keybind, simply click the settings icon, go to the keybind section, and remap the key you want. Here are some helpful keybinds. First, the Hide Player keybind will instantly pause your video and hide the player until you press it again. It's great for privacy. Second, the Undo Seek button will allow you to go back to a previous position after you seek on the timeline. It's helpful for jumping around places without losing your progress. Third, the Skip Intro Outro button will allow you to skip TV intros or outros once they have been detected. It locally compares scenes on videos you've watched to identify repetitive segments. As someone who needs subtitles to understand what people say in most videos, FastStream ended up having top-tier subtitle support. First, FastStream will automatically scrape subtitles from the website you are on and add them to the list. You can then save them as a file by clicking the download icon. If websites don't provide subtitles, FastStream's open subtitle support allows you to use subtitles uploaded by other people on opensubtitles.com. To use, simply search the name of the video you are watching and click on one of the results. Sometimes, subtitles are not properly aligned with the audio. To fix, simply click the hourglass icon by the track to toggle the subtitle resync tool. You can then drag the subtitle track to the correct timing position. A machine learning based voice activity detector provides a helpful visual reference. Sometimes, the video you are watching has poor contrast or audio issues. To solve this problem, FastStream allows you to adjust both video and audio in a comprehensive way. To adjust video settings, simply click the settings icon and move the appropriate sliders. Appropriate CSS filters will be then be applied. To adjust audio settings, click the blue sound wave icon to open the config window. Here you can equalize, compress, or amplify your audio with live feedback. Make sure to click the save button to keep your settings for next time. Sometimes FastStream will identify multiple video sources and start playing the wrong one. The sources browser can be used to solve this issue. Simply click the gold chain icon to open the sources browser. Then, not only are you able to select a different source, you're also able to adjust the sources themselves. Lastly, saving a video as a file is as simple as clicking the download icon on the control bar. FastStream will then collect the video, convert it to an MP4, and save it to your downloads folder. This is done using the same data loaded by the player for watching, so it doesn't re-download the video again. These are certainly not all the features I've baked into FastStream, and there will certainly be more in the future, but I haven't got the time to explain them all. Please note that FastStream is still under heavy development, so let me know if you find any bugs. I'll put the link in the description. Anyways, that's all I had to share with you today. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.